Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, once again, welcome to the learning sessions from Association of Nurse Executives India, hosted by Annie Patient Safety Fellows. So just give me a moment. I will have some information to give. Let me give that. And then following that, we have our national treasurer with us. So I'll be inviting Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Aji to say a few before that. So once again, a very, very warm welcome to the session. And thank you for joining us at 7 p.m. in the evening when the day is done. And it could be a little tiring for many, but still uh, we have uh, 36, 37 people here. Thank you so much for being here. So as I announced earlier, these learning sessions are being brought to you by any Patient Safety Fellows. These are on actionable evidence-based practices from Patient Safety Movement Foundation USA. It is with Patient Safety Movement Foundation that we are running the program. This is the third cohort that's running at this point of time. So this month's topic is standardized safeguard medication administration. What the fellows do is they actually go to the document, read, learn, and then present it for you so that it's easy for you to understand you know that you all are very busy. So we are doing it to improve patient safety and also support our nurses. That is Patient Safety Movement USA's logo there. I'll just knock off the sound. Okay, so that's the calendar. So we are committed to hosting one session every month. So last month we had culture of safety and this month standardized and safeguard medication administration. A quick word on evidence-based practice. So evidence-based practice is a process that is used to review, analyze, and translate the latest scientific evidence. The goal is to incorporate best available research along with clinical experience, patient preference, into clinical practice so nurses can make informed patient care decision. So it is very important for us to understand that out there in the world wide web, so much is available for us to know that what else people are doing, what research is going on, what is the evidence that is available that this will work and give you results. So it's very important for us to know that there is evidence available. There is nothing that we need to tell because I told so. That is not science. So evidence-based practice in nursing involves providing holistic quality care based on the most up-to-date research and knowledge. And this is what we are trying to do is bring the latest because I know Patient Safety Movement Foundation, they have members from across the globe who come together, look at all that is available. And then they put together a document saying all these will have the better results. So please do them. And that is what we are doing. Before I welcome our this month's speakers, let me just inform all of you present here. I'm very, very happy to announce that Anicon 2024, this is our fourth annual flagship event. And it's the second one in person. It is going to be held in uh, Chennai on 24th and 25th of May at Feathers Hotel. So if you are interested, keen, block your calendars. The topic is transformational leadership, impacting healthcare today and roadmap for the future. There are a lot of, uh, you know, activities planned. So um, I hope you all can hear me. Can someone say yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you all hear me? Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, ah, okay. Ma'am. So we have elocution competition preceding the Anicon. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you, ma'am. Thank you. And the winners will be invited to tonight to speak. We have quality improvement projects 
around transforming care at bedside. All these announcements are happening on the members group and also on the social media handle of Annie. So quality improvement projects, we have posters that are being invited uh, and the winners will be allowed to come to obviously Chennai and plus they can register at a discounted rate all the people who are you know submitting posters. This time we are also adding nurse-led research papers. So this is also being invited. So we are uh, upping our game. Anicon is happening in Chennai this time. So we hope to see many of you in Chennai on May 24th and 25th. And there are pre-conference uh, workshops happening also before that. That details will be shared later. So uh, it gives me immense pressure, uh, pleasure to present Ms. Purba Das, who is Sani Patient Safety Fellow 22-24, along with Lieutenant Colonel Amita Nees, who is Ani Patient Safety Fellow 23-25, uh, to present the topic, standardized and Safeguard Medication Administration. So uh, a very warm welcome to Purba and Amita. And uh, next month, you will be seeing uh, Abu Dayan and Shiny Varghese discussing on fall and fall prevention in adults, mother and So every, every month in our fellows. With that, thank you so much all of you for being here and I hand over the podium, the virtual podium to Amita and Purva to take the discussion. Thank you so much. Very warm welcome Purva and Amita. And a very, very warm welcome to all the audience present here today. Thank you, ma'am. Um, thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind introduction. And a very good evening to everyone present over here. Uh, ma'am, please start share the slides. Just a moment. Can you see it? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, as we know that medication plays an important role in healing the patient and in evaluating a nurse's performance toward patient safety. Uh, but nowadays, increasing in number of different type of medication errors is really a painful situation to all of us. I think everyone will agree with me. And uh, But these uh, errors are actually preventable. So, if the medical personnel are performing in a structured way, these are very easy to make it in a standardized standardized protocol and prevent the patient, uh, any error harms to patient and we can enhance the patient safety. So, today we are going to discuss a, a topic. Now, please change the slide. Sorry, there is some problem. Just hold on. Left hand side bottom, you might see arrow. Yes, ma'am. But I think click on the arrow, the forward arrow. Yes, ma'am. Once more, I'll share it, ma'am, because it's getting stuck. Okay. Yeah, we can see. Can you move? It was moving before. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am, just last slide. Right. So our today's topic that is uh, standardized and safe for the medication administration that can enhance the uh, level of patient safety. So here we can see one slide. 
uh, if any airline is expecting like one to two jet uh, to crash daily, that means more than thousand people will die. So will you take the ticket of that flight? I think no one is going to take the fl uh, flight. So likewise, the medication error is actually the problem nowadays. Uh, annually, it is seen that more than um, 44,000 to 98,000 deaths annually occur. And that can be that can lead to like around 5.2 million medication errors are happening annually. And among that, this many medication, uh, this many deaths because of medication error. And that is really very much painful towards the healthcare system. Not only that, for uh, also for the human being. Hence, it's a necessity to standardize the medication administration process. And this process, uh, this uh, involves implementing the uniform protocols and procedures across the healthcare setting to reduce the variability and enhance patient safety. And it is possible through safeguarding the process. To safeguard the process, it demands uh, some strategies that can prevent the medication errors and adverse reaction, and it can ensure to correct use of drugs towards the patients. So to strengthen the process, we need to take up some principles, some objectives uh, that can help us towards the towards the, the standardizing the protocol. So I would like to request Amita ma'am to enlighten us with those objectives. Ma'am, please. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. You are perfectly clear. So coming to the objectives of safeguarding medication administration, first is the importance of standardizing and safeguarding medication admission. Second is the challenges we are facing. Third is the remedies to, for the standardization. And fourth is the encourage the workflow of the interdisciplinary team. Coming to the first objective, the importance of standardization and safeguarding medication administration. Potential medication errors can be detected and corrected prior to the administration of medication to the patient. For preventing potential errors, we can ensure the seven R's, that is the right patient, right drug, right dose, right route, right time, right reason and right documentation. We can also perform the double check method. That is two individuals verifying the same drug and aims to reduce the error. Third is to ensure the three checks. That is check the medication administration record, checking while drawing up the medication and third again at the bedside of the patient. It is also important to check the allergies. So when it comes to the allergies, Whenever we are asking a patient regarding allergy, don't just ask the patient if you have any allergy. So then uh, a layman thinks that allergies are usually dust allergy or a food allergy. So you should emphasize on asking the patient if you have taken any medication and that has caused any itching, uh, like symptoms like vomiting or any breathlessness and your physician has told you that this medication is not suiting you so next time when you take this medication, uh, you will tell the doctor that this medication, I am allergic to this medication. So you should specify in asking such questions to the patient. Next, I'll come to the classification of the medication error. First is circumstances exist for potential error to occur. Like already a circumstances is there. For example, uh, patients uh, with the same name, two patients having the same name. So without proper verifying, you have administered the medication and cause an error. Second is an error occurred, but it did not reach the patient. It's like uh, uh, we have taken uh, you know, injections, which the dose was incorrect. And when we were doing the third check, where before administering to the patient, before coming to the bedside of the patient, we have seen that the drug was incorrect. So it has not reached the patient. The third is that error reached the patient, but did not uh, harm, cause harm. It is that if you forget to give tablet multivitamin to a patient, it didn't cause any harm, but an error has occurred. 
Next is a patient monitoring required to determine the lack of harm. Uh, uh, for example, a regular release of metoprolol was uh, um, uh, ordered, but instead of that, you have given an extended release. So uh, some uh, 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 it caused us uh, it caused uh, a little uh, harm to the patient, uh, and uh, patient monitoring was required. Next is error caused temporary harm and some intervention as required. Like a uh, hypertensive medicine was inadvertently omitted. So what happened is that from the orders, so what happened is that uh, uh, error has caused temporary harm and some intervention was required to decrease the uh, uh, BP of the patient. Next is a temporary harm with initial or prolonged hospitalization. Uh, for example, an anticoagulant warfarin was uh, given to a patient daily who was taking on alternate days. So what has happened is that uh, for monitoring of the patient, we have to keep the patient for prolonged hospitalization. Next is an error resulted in permanent patient harm. Like uh, any overdose of any drug which has caused autotoxicity to the patient can be an example. Next is error required intervention to sustain the patient life. Uh, for example, injection morphine, strength and dosage variation has occurred. So that does uh, you know, sustain the patient life. And last, but uh, the very danger is that error contributed to patient's death. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, infusing uh, injection potassium chloride uh, directly to the patient's IV line. So these are the classification of medication errors. So, Purva, would you like to tell some of other objectives which you uh, have come across? Sure, ma'am. Another one I would like to highlight that is the communication, enhanced communication. We all know that communication is uh, like uh, the solution. It means it's not only means it can cause problem as well as it can give us a solution in any situation. If it's in a proper way, communication can heal a deep injury too. So to enhance the process of communication in the healthcare sector, what can we do? Here we need to uh, follow a few steps like listen, write, read, confirm. Like whenever actually there is no such verbal policy that we will hear and we will perform for the medication administration or uh, prescription or anything. But in the uh, emergency situation, we can follow the verbal order. And for that, what we can do, we can listen it carefully first. The say, the receiver will uh, listen and then they will write it down in some uh, particular area. And after writing down, they will read it back with the uh, to match the, uh, the prescription or the order or the advice we can say with the sender that whether it is right or not. And then the receiver will take a confirmation with the sender and the sender will give a response that yes, it's right. Or uh, like for example, we can say like uh, so if some patient is having hyperglycemia, uh, the sugar level, the capillary blood glucose level is increased to some extent. So over phone we can, uh, sometimes we are asking to doctor like this patient is having this uh, level of blood sugar. So why, how we can go for the insulin administration? Then doctor may say like injection uh, human ectropid, six unit to be administered. So the receiver, they have to uh, repeat the same. Injection human ectropid, four unit to Mr. This patient, is it right? So the sender will say, yes, it is right. And there must be some uh, witness in front of them, especially over the telephonic communication. And if we are following the steps in a proper way, the communication can uh, help us to reduce the uh, incidence of medication error. I think we everyone will agree with that. So not only the process of communication, but so many in initiatives we can take to ensure the quality of patient care. Uh, Ma'am, can you please take us to the those other ways? Yeah. Apurva, uh, standardization itself is a coin having two sides. You know, where one side by safeguarding the process itself, the quality is assured. 
and on the other side the nurses required uh, you know they acquire knowledge and they uh, uh, acquire confidence in delivering safe uh, medication practices which leads to the speedy recovery of the patient and leads to the cost effectiveness and thus ensure the quality patient care so uh, there are some uh, challenges we are facing in safeguarding the medication administration you know uh, uh, we'll be talking about some challenges and puga you uh, can you please uh, uh, tell me some of the challenges you have uh, come across yes ma'am uh, there are few challenges like the human factors uh human factors this starts uh this can be involved uh this can involve from the grassroots level nurse till the leaders like when uh, nowadays number of attrition rate i must say that it is increasing like uh, anything because the staffs are looking for higher study not only for the, not only that but also they are looking for a better opportunity and for better opportunity number of uh, nurse attrition is increasing so as a result we are always ready to welcome the new nurses in the system and the new nurses may be very much fresh and novice to the system or though they have some experience but the hospital the organization is new to them so there is a, there is a situation that they are taking some time to coping with the situation or with the pro policies and protocols of the hospital so here what we can do as uh, the leaders and of the hospital of the organization can handhold the staff because always we have to find the solution not only the challenges but because if we are facing any challenge always we have to be ready with solution so here we can do like the uh, seniors the leaders the immediate senior also can handhold the staff can make them understood about the policies the protocols the medications different type of medications we are using in our organization we can make them oriented with that and not only that i would like to mention here about our organization in our organization uh, to reduce uh, these uh, human factors we have uh, employed uh, two pharmacist who will be side by side with the nurses always during medication administration they will help them to indent and during the administration they will make it a double check with the medicine whether it is right or not so like that we can go with human factors as a challenge as a solution another one is dispensing error yes because every organization is having so many departments and there is only one or two in uh, in pharmacy in patient pharmacy and all the medicines are being dispensing from the particular area and the representative of each departments are presenting over there so what happens uh, a patient is having lot many medic medication together not a single medicine and nowadays medicines are having so many composition or with same compositions uh, different different names are available so what happens uh, during this time uh, during this dispensing uh, there are so many mixing up like uh, for Ms. the medicine for mr x is going to mr y such things are happening but it can be preventable like when the medications are receiving uh, received by the nurses in the um, particular department that time if they are going to check with the receipt with the medication so the incident can happen but again there is one situation like it's time consuming and another one is self medication after uh, discharging uh, the patient is going back to their home and they are uh, starting to take the medication by self but sometimes what happens because of a lack of knowledge they sometimes stop the stop taking the medication like uh, i am not having this problem so i can stop medication today my sugar level is okay so i will not take the anti diabetic uh, medicine like that way sometimes the patients are doing one thing is there another one is financial issue sometimes patients are thinking the medicines are too much costly so um, can't afford so let it be because i am okay now so such th such challenges we are always facing and as a result just after returning to home uh, the patients are stopping medicine or skipping the medicine because of lack of knowledge or some financial issues and again coming back to our hospital so that challenge we are facing regarding the medication administration uh, so ma'am i would like to request for the another challenges you are facing in your organization yeah purva uh, like you said uh, regarding the self medication and over the counter medication you no know, patient goes to the pharmacy take the medications from the pharmacy they want some antibiotics 
or uh, they're having some uh, fever or a running nose, they take a course of antibiotics from the pharmacy. And, uh, you know, that causes so much of challenges when, the comes with, when they come to the hospital. You know, uh, starting an antibiotic will be a problem. You know, uh, and that time uh, uh, the doctor faces so much challenges because the uh, one course of medication has already been taken uh, by the patient. Uh, so some other challenges are like polypharmacy. Polypharmacy uh, is an administration of many drugs at the same time, or exactly more than five medications. So uh, uh, there are some methods uh, we have, uh, um, as, uh, you know, taken to appropriate this polypharmacy, and we have applied in our hospital also. Like our aim is to give the right medication uh, to the patient. So after discussing with the physician who has treated the patient, we can delete some unnecessary drugs. For example, some limited benefit drugs, which the previous doctor on so on uh, uh, his consultation has ordered for a temporary indication. So those medication can be, uh, you know, uh, spoken. We can sp speak with the physician and we can uh, stop that medication and uh, we can identify essential drugs, which uh, is not to be stopped without the uh, uh, doctor's advice. And uh, uh, next is identify the drug which has got the therapeutic objective, like to uh, achieve symptom control or to prevent the disease progression or uh, exacerbation. So, uh, uh, and next point is to identify patient safety risk, like ADR or any side, side effects. And uh, you can also uh, uh, um, uh, take drugs for in, in combination doses. Like essential drugs can be mixed up and uh, combination doses are available in the market. And uh, uh, costly drugs, that is also a, a problem uh, because uh, before uh, we discharge a patient from the hospital, uh, we have to look for his uh, financial background, which also explains uh, my next point, that is non-compliance. So uh, what happens in non-compliance, there is a failure or a refusal to comply. So it can be due to polypharmacy also, but when a patient has several medications, you know, prescribed with a higher dosage or frequency, the chances that they will have non-compliance. So we have to help that patient. Uh, we can try to simplify it by discussing with the physician, as I, as I already told, by adjusting medicines so that, you know, they can be taken at the same time uh, of the day or consolidated by combination products. Like there are other uh, factors for non-compliance is like lack of symptoms. As uh, Purva already told, patients who don't feel any difference when they start or stop medication, you know, they uh, find no reason to continue the medication. So uh, they stop themselves. And another thing is that once the patient's symptoms are controlled, so they feel that uh, the problem is resolved. So why should, should I take the medication? And they discontinue. So those are, these are the reason for the non-complaints. The next challenge uh, is the lack of uh, interdisciplinary team. So uh, uh, the interdisciplinary team, what uh, the team uh, uh, enhances the coordination of the care and it improves the, uh, uh, you know, patient's access to the medical services. So uh, lack of this uh, interdisciplinary team will increase the days of hospitalization of the patient. It increases the patient safety and increases the rate of complications and medication errors. So uh, this team, uh, which consists of the nurse, uh, who is a supervisor, a physician, a pharmacist, a dietitian, a caregiver, and the patient himself can be a member of this team because they work uh, with uh, together and they are tightly connected to their own professional team. So this team contribute to the evaluation of the patient outcome and continue of the care. So uh, we have discussed regarding the objectives, uh, challenges of uh, standardization of uh, ad medication administration. Uh, so uh, yeah, we should have some remedies, solutions for these challenges. So we'll come to the remedies of standardization of medication safety. Purva, uh, uh, can you uh, start with some uh, remedies? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one of the most prioritized solution or remedy we can say that is the uh, education system or in-service in education. It can solve every single problem from the root. 
if it's following in a proper way by the edu uh, by the means uh, the teachers and the students i mean the leaders and the nurses everyone like uh, the insurance education can be done as in the classroom as well as in the bedside in the clinical field and uh, all the nurses nurses uh, will be the leaders all the nurse leaders like the educators the infection control nurse the quality nurse the supervisor uh, the immediate senior or the um, HOD of the department, everyone can be the leader, can be the teacher and can take part in the in-service education process. And in this process, we can meet the staff to understand regarding the medicine, the process of medication, the uh, process of administration, like how to dissolve, how to make the, how to prepare the medicine and how to administer, what all things they should take care of for what type of medication. For example, if the uh, staff is going to administer injection KCL, that must be going uh, administered through, uh, not, not through peripheral line, through central line. And that is the best way if we are uh, administering the medication through the process of infusion. We are using the syringe pump for administering the medicine. So these many things, there are so many things we can uh, make them through uh, understood through the in-service education. And if the staffs are taking this in a, in a serious way, they are practicing under some supervision, it can help. Um, it can sol uh, solve the issue of the medication error. And not only regarding the medicine, but one another one uh, solution we can give that is the electronic prescribing not only the nurse but uh, as i said that we are we have employed the pharmacist for the uh, for redu reducing the number of medication error so electronic prescribing means uh, in the system if we are uh, indenting any medicine through the system or prescribing through the system so what will happen the medication the uh, transcription of every medication will be in a proper way there will be no incident of misunderstanding with the uh, similarity of the drug or the um, spelling of the drug or understanding the handwriting and all. So electronic, and not only that, if we are uh, putting any medication name in the uh, electronic system, it will, so, it will uh, show so many options. So from that also we can choose what, which, one, which one medicine the doctor has prescribed with which dose and, and in which form, like medicine, injection, syrup, or whatever. So that can be make uh, easy understandable. And not only that, if there is any barcode system on the medicine, so the nurses, every, nowadays everyone is very much tech savvy. So if there is barcode on the medicine, the staff, what they can do, they can scan the barcode and they can understand the uh, action of the medicine because uh, sometimes the staff can say, like, we are very busy with the number of allocations, so many patients, so we cannot go and sit on the system, okay? So the through the barcode, they can scan and they can understood, like, this medicine is for this action. Uh, and if I am going to give the medicine, administer the medicine, these this, this actions can happen. So I have to take care of that. So from uh, in the prior, the staff will be uh, oriented about the medic medicine, its side effects, its contraindication and what all uh, responsibilities they have to take care of. So uh, through this way, you know, we can solve a little bit of issues. So ma'am, please handhold us regarding the other solutions. Yeah, uh, so we have uh, some more solutions like periodic auditing, medication safety, team uh, uh, availability, and uh, of course, uh, the most important health education. So coming to the periodic auditing, the purpose of the auditing is to ensure uh, that the policies and the medication management, uh, that is in line with how the policy state they should operate. So uh, it avoids uh, potential fatal errors. So a professional audit can be carried out like any time of the year, like uh, a, a medication audit checklist can be uh, pro uh, um, provided, maintained and audit periodically to uh, standardize the safety. Uh, it can, uh, it, this checklist can contain like uh, drug utilization, review analysis, availability of the stock, maintaining, uh, maintenance of stock, a storage policy maintenance, cold chain maintenance, inventory practice guidelines, no Lhasa drug storage, high alert medication storage, control medication inventory, example, example any narcotics, you know, and uh, ADR policies, pharmacovigilance uh, tracking, open vial policies or antibiotic stewardship program. And it can al also include questions like 
does the staff know about the medication errors and how to report, whom to report? And at the end, you can evaluate for any evaluate and give the corrective plan or the preventive action. And next is the uh, uh, medication safety team. This team provides safe medication practices. So uh, at pharmacy level, medication safety team is functioning in every hospital. But I feel in our level also, we can start a safety medication team, uh, which can include a supervisory level uh, a safety team leader, a nurse educator, and a member of the pharmacy to ensure the safe practices. The member of the pharmacy can be the drug controller and the uh, supervisor can be the safety team leader. The successful medication safety team depends on the presence of a safe culture. So reporting a medication error is the prime necessity of the team. So I quote safe culture, ensuring reporting only can be done by uh, a safe culture, thus improving the medication safety and safeguard medication administration. So you have to avoid blaming culture so that the nurse will will not uh, the, the nurse will report the errors to the authorities. Uh, next uh, solution uh, is the, the health education. The patient should be counseled regarding the overall pharmaceutical care, the safe use of the medication, effective use, the potential drug drug interaction or any drug diet interactions. Uh, uh, this actually, actually the health education will be uh, we will be telling in our upcoming slides. And uh, there is a teach back method policy also can be practiced, which again will be discussed in the coming slides when we discuss about the patient discharge education. You know, there are some uh, best practices to promote and safeguard medication administration. Let's see what all are the best practices. So, uh, Purva, let's start, uh, you know, telling some of the best practices. Uh, you can start with, uh, you know, some of the practices. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, first we'll go with the steps of uh, mandatory steps of medication administration. <laughs> steps we are specially following in our organization and that is showing that there is a reduction of uh, happening the medication error. Uh, like uh, it is seen in the ward area especially uh, as the staffs are having more than uh, four or uh, four allocations sometimes because of the huge occupancy and uh, sometimes uh, shortage of the nurse, uh, nurses. So what they are doing, they are taking all the medications together to the patient side and they are giving one by one. So as a result, what happening, they are not, as they are not following the medication card, they are not carrying that. So what happens, uh, sometimes there is a miss in dose. So accordingly, we have uh, started to follow some steps like the, the staff have to carry the medication chart, medicine chart along with the patient's file at the bedside, not only for, for what, but for all the areas, they have to carry it out. And then at the bedside, they have to check the patient's name. If the patient is conscious, they will call the patient by the name and Along with that, they have to check the patient's ID band and they have to match the UHID number specially with the medicine chart. And then what they have to do? They will take the uh, medicine and hold with the uh, hold in front of their eye level and check the medicine with the medicine chart. It's uh, time, dose, strength, and the route and the frequency and the expiry date. And of course, they will uh, make it a double check with their uh, immediate senior or the supervisor, whoever is presenting on that very moment. And then they will administer the medicine by preparing it properly, like uh, in which strain they have to uh, dissolve and all, that they have to do it at the bedside only. And if they are going to give a, a, administer any oral medication, they have to use the medication cup. And then just after completing the process of medication administration, they have to document on that very moment that putting the signature and signature must be either initial or uh, in uh, means the small, but with their ID. 
because uh, the name of the staff can be same, but the ID is the unique for the every staff. So they have to put the immediate signature uh, documentation in the medicine chart. So these steps, if you are following, there is uh, uh, no chance of error during administration. Now going towards the another solution that is the rights of medication administration as we know about the rights of medication administration so uh, we will not go directly in uh, detail with the medication administration rights and already ma'am has already explained regarding those and there are the 16 rights and another one is the safety check like the read back strategy already we have explained regarding the read back like if there is any uh, medicine uh, we are taking in verbal order or we are going to give any one time stat dose of medicine or uh, taking the that like verbal order over phone so we have to follow the read back strategy and that must be uh, document, uh, documented in the sop another one is the tallman lettering of the lesser drug that is the look uh, alike and sound alike uh, drugs so and there must be a color code for the drug so that from the far away also if we are seeing the medicine we can understand yes this is a look-alike drug there should be a particular color of label another one is alert sticker unlike some patient is uh, having some uh, for the line also as well as for the medicine if some patient is having some particular drug there must be an alert sticker like sometimes for the patients uh, on the patient's medication chart also we are putting red color sticker that's safety alert one Another one is double person, double luck. Like for the narcotic medicine, the narcotic medicine must be uh, kept in storage in double luck system. And there will be a two key, uh, of course, double luck along with two key. One key will be with the uh, in, in charge or the supervisor of the uh, area. Another one will be uh, the another, another in charge or the second level in charge who can be present on time and can open this. So double person, double lock system must be followed, especially for the narcotic policy and especially in the emergency area or the OT area or wherever we are storing the narcotic medicines. Another one is the inventory control. Uh, inventory control means uh, every hospital, I think every organization, we are having a particular policies and protocols for our stock management, like how many medicine and where to keep. And for the every medicine, there must be a label like this medicine to be kept here and this medicine to be kept in this number and what is the expiry date of the number that those all things to be maintained in a proper register the register may be um in uh, on electronic basis in the soft copy or maybe in the hard copy but they are in best uh, use i think it will be a hard copy also so that after checking all the things there we can put a signature that yes it is checked and the number whatever it is or if we are taking any medicine in emergency situation, like all of a sudden there is a um, cardiac arrest. So we have to take some uh, take out some emergency medicine from the crash trolley. So next on the next check, we can understood whether the number of medication are same in stock or there is a re reduction. And if reduction, we can replace it with the medication and then put a signature. Another one is the <coughs> format. ISBAR format is, uh, we are uh, using and it is very helpful format for the handover process. Like identification, situation, background, assessment, and uh, then, uh, um, uh, then reassessment of the patient and recommend the, recommend the next uh, care for the patient. For, the, for any telephonic message along with the double check process and read back process. And along with, always look for the patient concern what the patient are willing for because whatever we are doing that is for the patient so sometimes it's necessary to take patient's concern and take their um means we have to take permission of the patient before doing anything for them now i would uh, like to request ma'am for other best practices to show us yeah uh, so next is the leadership checklist so what we have in the leadership checklist, uh, first is measure and report medication errors and near misses, like by practicing a safe culture in the institution. Second is implementing the organization policy to ensure the medication safety. Third is the medication pass audit or medication safety rounds. Uh, and 
Fourth is ensuring the workflow of the tracking safety events like money and quotic policy, open wild policy, antibiotic stewardship policy, etc. And you know, a medication inventory checklist can be prepared and it can be checked every day in every shift. Monthly near expiry can be checked and a high medication medication checklist can also be uh, uh, followed. So there are some daily care practices which has to be initiated before administrating any drugs. As Kuba already told, uh, but I'll just sum up with this. These practices should be followed before administrating any medication to the patient. First of all, you should communicate with, with the patient. Go and tell the patient that I am the nurse who is going to give the medicine to you and collect baseline information regarding any past uh, medical or surgical history. Obviously, infection control practices to be followed. Check allergies uh, and do patient identifiers when you collect the baseline information like uh, um, uh, an uh, ID, ID of the patient or a date of birth. And uh, a, a no interruption zone can, can be practiced in the ward, like uh, nurses can be putting a sachet on, on their uh, uniform saying that we uh, no interruption zone, telling that these nurses are you know, uh, uh, administrating medication so that nobody should disturb those nurses and they should, uh, you know, without disturbing, they can administer the medications to avoid the medication errors. Three self checks before administration medication, as I've already told, uh, you know, uh, uh, once you have taken from the medication administration record, the second check, you know, when you are taking out the medication, third check before you are uh, going uh, to the patient's bedside. So, and, uh, and last but not least is the documentation. Documentation immediately after administration of medication. Next is the uh, discharge care practices. You know, uh, written discharges uh, are, care should be given to a patient in the language they understand. Uh, there are so many other uh, factors in discharge care like medication reconciliation. It is to be done to prevent any omissions, duplication, dosing errors, and drug interactions. It can be done by listing the current medication, own medication, which the patient was already taking at home, and the medication which was presented, and uh, compare these medication, and uh, reconcile the medication, and make the patient understand how to take the medication. Next one is the medication review. So it can be done by, you know, in a comprehensive review of the patient's prescription and the medication data before, during, and after dispensing to ensure appropriate, again, medicine issued to the patient. Uh, Follow-up appointment should be ensured to check up uh, the patient's progress and can assess and adjust the treatments. In addition to the medication reconciliation and review, the, uh, the uh, patient can be given some emergency information like uh, uh, whom to contact for any uh, you know recurrence or worsening of uh, symptoms and their contact numbers uh, in the hospital. Uh, next is a pharmacy delivery. So timely delivery of medicines uh, is to be done during a discharge process. This will facilitate the nurses to advise the patient regarding you know administration of medication, reconciliation, review, follow up, and, and then you know the patient can be uh, uh, taught regarding all these things. Uh, uh, patient and caregiver training. It's a very important uh, point during the discharge care. Uh, patient as well as the caregiver has to be trained in all these aspects of the uh, discharge care regarding drugs, diets, follow-up, emergency uh, information, etc. You know, uh, for example, uh, if a diabetic patient is discharged, you know, well, uh, this patient's, uh, patient and the bystander can be trained uh, uh, if the patient is uh, discharged with insulin, like training can be given for looking the site, uh, procedure, the dosage, any hypoglycemic corrections, etc. Uh, a drug card, you know, we can educate the patient by telling that to keep a drug card, you know, in the wallet of the patient to identify that uh, I am a diabetic, saying that I'm a diabetic. And he can carry some chocolates or glucose packets 
uh, with this to uh, you know uh, during traveling anywhere other instructions like drug to drug interactions and drug uh, uh, diet interactions can also be taught and uh, uh, if you uh, go for some cardiac patients you can always say regarding some sodium restrictions and for renal patients uh, due medication is very important which can also be explained like injection erythropoietin if i have to take uh, on the due day it has to be explained to the patient a uh, very interesting uh, um, uh, five t's we are having a teach back five t's you know this is uh, consist of the delivery and the reception so we have five t's like triage tools taking responsibility tell me and try again like for example uh, my patient has undergone a ptc and i'll be teaching him in the triage i'll take you know uh uh triage what is focus on just one topic for teach back so i'll take as one topic as the important of taking anti platelet medicines so the uh, second t is a tool so i'll make some posters or uh, graphics telling that you know showing the blood vessels of the patient and how the anti platelet drugs is is uh, is you know is to prevent the blood clots and if not taken regularly you know how it can increase the rates of any form of complications like you know um, even a worsening a second attack or a stroke or a venous thromboembolism so i'll take responsibility in doing this job of teaching this patient that is take responsibility and uh, next t is tell me tell me is i'll ask the patients uh, to tell me in their own words what they understood from my teaching and uh, they have to tell me that what they understood and what they are going to do so if i feel that it is all right my teaching is all right the patient is telling the correct thing i am satisfied otherwise i'll try it again that is the five t's for teach back so we have some five moments of uh, medication safety uh, this is for the patient so we we have like we should teach the patient when uh, when we start a medication when we when the patient take a medication we should uh, advise them we should advise them when a medication is added we should also teach them when a medic medication is reviewed by a physician or when they stop a medication we should uh, you know teach them or we should interact with the patient regarding this so uh, the to summarize standardization and safeguard medication administration is paramount for patient safety by embracing technology adhering to the standardized procedures and actively participation in education and monitoring we contribute significantly to a safe and more efficient medication administrative system so our take home message will be medication administration if done with safety considerations like identifying the patient correctly checking for allergy performing hand hygiene checking the expiry of medication following this uh, the seven rights of medication safety standardization and safeguarding of medication as administration can be achieved so as rightly said in a chinese proverb if you hear you forget if you see you remember if you do you know so do it and show the world that you know thank you thank very you thank you so much ma'am uh, so i would like to request uh, ma'am and all the audience to give their inputs in this okay we can stop sharing amita very well done purba and amita uh, very well discussed and uh, for the audience these points are taken from the actionable evidence based practice document from patient safety movement foundation usa so if anyone in the audience would like to add to the discussion uh, we can take another 5 10 minutes we have we are exactly at 8 pm we can take 5 10 minutes more if someone wants to share something uh i'm not very sure if um, uh, colonel aji is there hello yes ma'am i'm here 
Okay, okay. We'll start with you. Why don't you say a few words, so, ladies and gentlemen? That is Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Aji uh, KL, uh, who is the National Treasurer of Association of Nurse Executives India. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I first I congratulate Purba and Lieutenant Colonel Amita for such a wonderful presentation. It is not only content wise, the slides were so good. And uh, the, I mean, it was like a, uh, what you say, you know, such an uh, active presentation. Very well done, both of you and uh, the mentor who, who mended them. Congratulations, ma'am. It's uh, uh, I mean, really a learning experience. And uh, I don't want to say anything about uh, this presentation or uh, the content of this. I want to say about the patient safety fellowship I don't know. Uh, I was very busy that time. That's why I could. I didn't join. And I'm really. I'm telling you after seeing all the flyers, what these people put, I really uh, miss it. That I regret that I was. I'm not a, a part of it. And uh, it's a very good program. And uh, I'm uh, happy that Annie. Annie is uh, one of the uh, educative group and uh, imparting education to everyone. Keep going it. Also, the audience, I request, please join Anicon 24 at Chennai. And please actively participate in all the programs, as Madam Thangam said in the beginning. Thank you so much, Madam. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Aji. Thank you so much for your kind words. And uh, so, as Saji mentioned, that Annie is about nurses and nursing in India. Annie Patient Safety Fellowship is one way of you know, contributing because we are committed to patient safety. So uh, through the document, through the discussion with all the examples, you have, you know, uh, really dealt with the topic in depth. And if there is anyone else would like to say something, you are free to unmute and you can contribute. Um, I just want only, you know, to summarize, to say that, you know, all the points were good. I'm going to just highlight a few practical things, you know. Most of the time, most nurses are aware what they need to do. Unfortunately, they don't follow what they know. Or if they cannot follow what they know, they don't raise their voice. So I would only call out to all the nurses to say that, you know, what you know, follow. And if you are not able to follow because of whatever is the reason, you have to speak up. Try not to harm a patient and then give an excuse. Oh, I didn't get the medicine on time. I always used to tell my nurses, will you give that excuse if the patient is your loved one? You will move the entire world to say that this medicine should have been given. It's not yet given, you know. You will be worried about that, right? You know, Lhasa, you know, I also would like to add Sasa. Sasa is spell alike and sound alike patient. Lasa is look alike and sound alike medicine. Sasa is spell alike and you know sound alike patients. They are also a dangerous category. Uh, so now there are newer practices coming up across the world. Uh, it is not necessary that the medication should be always given by the assigned nurse. Most of the nurses are very young. And they may not know all the medicines. So there are organizations which are trying out medication nurse. Who will be? And I I kind of like the idea. It's only because, you know, that medication can nurse can be a rotational assignment. So let's say Tankam becomes the medication nurse for three months. In three months time, I will become pretty good with all the medicines that I'm giving, right? Because that's my job, right? And I will be the one who will be educating patients when they go home on their medication. So this medication nurse kind of becomes specialized because she is solely concentrating on medication without getting distracted with something else. Now, you can imagine in such a setup, there will be other nurses now who would say that I also want to be a medication nurse. Now, the administration can put in a hook to say that we want to know that you are really interested. Let's see that how much of knowledge you already carry. So that becomes a, a kind of a competition for the nurses to learn, to get into this medication nurse category. 
So it's like a prestigious thing to be a medication nurse. I was a medication nurse, right? So administration, so human factors is about managing the people, right? When you know that in our systems, it's very difficult to teach a young nurse 10,000 medications. And all the private hospitals have very high-end patients, super specialities, all kinds of medications, you know. So teach them everything about the medications, the side effects. It is humanly not possible. So we may have to find ways of, you know, ensuring the nurses take an interest to learn the medicine. I always tell nurses, don't give medicine if you don't know. First read, at least ask the doctor, what is this medicine? What am I supposed to watch out for? Two things. What is this medicine for? What should I watch in my patient? So that you, know, you are contributing to patient safety. Blindly don't go and give medicine by reading. For that, we don't need to be trained for four years. Any patient attendant will also do the same thing, right? They will read, look at the tablet and give it to the attendant. Why should we need nurses who are trained for four years to do that? We are training for four years because we have the clinical acumen. We can think critically. So um, we can have lots of good webinars, a lot of knowledge we can have. Finally, what we do when nobody is watching is going to be the acid test, correct? That is where patient safety happens. All these activities that we are doing is to, you know, ignite the, you know, passion for patient safety among all nurses and leaders that, you know, we should be worried when something is not going right, you know. You, you, all the good practices have been shared today. So if you think that in your hospital, there is a challenge in one of those areas, maybe you need to go back and talk to them. Human factors, doing long duty hours, doing double duty, 18 hours. You are writing a prescription for error because the brain is tired. They may not be so alert. So I really would request all of you that when you attend such webinars where there is learning and sensitization and repeat of knowledge that you already have, always think that what is the difference I'm doing from tomorrow? I'm really sorry. My puppy started barking. Sorry about that. So, so that's my request to all of you. And a final call to anyone uh, who would like to share something, please go ahead and share. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, good evening to Ms. Purba and ma'am Amita. Thank you uh, so much for such a wonderful presentation and uh, so much learning. Uh, take home message from today's webinar is um, teach back. Uh, although we know that we need to understand our patients has learned or not after we tell them. But uh, this is really five T's. Uh, this is for me uh, taking back home today uh, from this webinar. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, very good learning. And uh, uh, Thangam ma'am, thank you so much for that three month thing. And in my our setting, we have tried with four nurses for with this three months um, period with a medication nurse. Uh, till now, it became four nurse. And uh, as you rightly said, uh, without knowing the medicine, we should not inject to somebody's body without knowing knowing it because they have all the rights. And uh, we have also done a QIP and knowing that this three months uh, medication nurse when they become, and we also put a uh, you know criteria that how much reporting or who will do the good catch, and those people will be the next uh, in a rota in a you know flow. So uh, they became really motivated and uh, so happy from, by this APSF uh, webinar because the culture of safety, it is like a chain. Like first session, we talk about safe culture of safety and it is continuing with this. And today's webinar also uh, like major point, how to create the culture of safety and how to motivate people to raise, you know, like uh, report the incidences and how to make them responsible. So this three months of medication nurse idea is really, really helpful, ma'am, because they when they go back, 
they become more sensitive when they take a handover like uh, and they they have most uh, mostly they catch all the good cats and near miss any time plot has been wrong uh, bd became tedious so they're the one who catch it and who identify it and who tell us also about storage about safety about dispensing everything ma'am so this much from my side and thank you so much for this uh, wonderful presentation and for the take home message the teach back Although we have a uh, discharge education, like tapering of many medications as per the laboratory values, and with these ideas, we are also thinking about nurse clinic. And recently, we have presented in our credentialing committee. Also, they have also approved to go ahead with this. So I think uh, today's webinar also is going to help me or in the entire settings for medication safety. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Garishma. Neetu, your hand is up. You want to share something? Yes, yes ma'am. Between. Can I say in between? Yeah, yeah Karishma, uh, the 5T, uh, uh, the slide has been gifted uh, to me by our uh, the great mentor, Madam Tankam. So I'm actually fascinated with that uh, slide. I'm actually fascinated because, you know, your teach bad policy, we, we say, but we don't tell the patient to you know, say back. That was the thing which we are not doing it. So that is a very good, you know, uh, you know, knowledge what we have acquired that, you know, did, uh, we say blah, 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 blah to the everything the patient. So what the patient understood, we don't know. So if you sit Definitely. for some more time and, you know, uh, you listen to the patient what he actually understood with our uh, blah, blah. So if that, you know, shows that we have done our job. So thank you so much, madam. And I'll take this opportunity for your unwavering passion and support that makes all the difference. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you indeed, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am I am living patient safety through each one of you because I'm not handling patients, right? Yeah, over to Neetu. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Truly that uh, you are actually making us to do those things which you are having a vision to place in the patient safety. Uh, definitely with the human factor already, Karishma has uh, talked about it and you also uh, given a very uh, important thing, ma'am, medication safety nurse. Yes, of course, uh, it plays a very vital role when it comes to uh, making an education regarding the patient, uh, the medication as well. One more thing, uh, as Puva was talking about EMR system, that technology will help us for the HIS or maybe the intending of the drugs. And also uh, during the administration also, it will help us to scan the drugs. So whether we are getting a right patient, a right medication. So our uh, rights of administration will also be checked over there and the human error will be lessened. One yeah. more thing, just want to... Uh, just a, a bit of thing which I actually thought of like telling about is uh, when she was talking about intending the drugs, she will get multiple options. Uh, uh, the nurse will get multiple options and from that she can select. The best thing is which we usually talk to our nurses, whenever you intend a drug, always put the complete prescription what a doctor has stated. That will give a more better picture and better uh, what we say, correct uh, uh, choosing of a drug because with the multiple option, this happens actually more frequently in our hospital, which we reported a lot of time, they have selected wrong drug with the wrong doses. So that indent, indenting error, we have came up, uh, reduced it through the help of our medication champs, which we identified at the floors. And also with the help of medication safety nurse, which is a specialty nurse who's roaming around and checking all those things where the training is imparted or, or training is required. That is just only two points I wanted to add. Thank you. Since you touched upon, uh, you know, technology, I would also urge all of you who are progressing in your EMR that you should actually tell IT people to help you to make your processes more robust. Number one, uh, like uh, Nitu was just mentioning that, you know, put the full prescription. So they can program from the back end that till you till you type the full name of the drug, you cannot select. Otherwise, what happens? You you may put V E R and then all the V E R S will come. That's the big, the famous uh, Wanda case that happened in U S. You know, 
where she was being tried for murder and then it converted later. That's a different story altogether. So good nurse with no intention to harm the patient. Finally, they had to admit that it was the process and the organization's failure. Because it should not have been allowed because the system was not working well. They did tell, but the system was not fixed. So it's very important when something is not working for the patient's safety. Don't tell once and keep quiet. I always say, keep shouting till you get the answer. When I was a CNO, I used to say, make my life miserable. Call me 10 times and tell that, you know, I have a problem. I can't leave my ward like this. I said, I want you to make my life miserable rather than next day I am making my life miserable trying to figure out how the error happened. That's too late for the patient. So I'm very happy to hear about good catch. You know, uh, nurses who catch medication errors before it reaches the patient, make them, give them priority to be a medication nurse. So that becomes an incentive that everybody wants to find out if there is any error happening. So capitalize on their curiosity to be recognized, you know, to be told that you are a patient champion. So utilize all those things because today's date, we don't have the luxury of having a lot of experienced nurses who knows all the medicines. It's not there. It's just not there. So we need to come up with a lot of innovative methods. If someone told me earlier that, you know, I will create a medication nurse, I would have told, no, every single nurse should know medications and they only know their patients so they can look for side effects they can assist the patient but today as i stand here with all the challenges we have i would say no we should find methods which are safer for our patients and safer for our nurses but give them opportunity to learn to come to that level so they can be safety soldiers as dr michael ramsey from psmf says we all are safety soldiers who are guarding the safety of our patients. With that last thought, wishing all of you that become more and more passionate about patient safety. We need more soldiers fighting for patient safety. Let's go out there and fight for patient safety and let's build our knowledge because without knowledge, you will not know what to do, where to look for. So that's why these sessions are for. So looking forward to see each one of you in March again with Abu or Abdul and Shiny Vargas. They are going to talk about falls and fall prevention, another very interesting topic. See you all and keep planning for Anicon 2024 in May 24th and 25th at Chennai. Okay, see you all there. Good thank night you. and take care. God bless you. Bye bye. And thank, thank you, you Amita and Purba once again. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Night all. Good night.